Okay, there's a list of uh, things in the air quality modeling section. Uh, here is a template for the for the uh, report. I think I'll just talk you through this for now, right? Because this is what you're going to prepare for actually running the model. Okay, so your report consists of the title. The title could be the same. It's just different between uh, the location uh, for each of you. And each of you will have a different, different location. So title, then your name, introduction, just like before. Methods, in the methods part, it's more uh, um, detailed. There's a site description. There's the air pollution dispersion model where you uh, discuss briefly what the model is about. So the model is basically that Gaussian plume equation that you saw. That is the basic. And it's part of air screen too. Then the stack specification. Then the meteorology. That's why you need to download the meteorological data. Results and discussion of your run, modeling run. The conclusion, references and tables if you have any. I think maybe no tables, just up to references. Just ignore tables, because tables could be somewhere in between, right? So uh, we move that later on. So that is what you need to uh, write later for your report. And then these are the air screen air mod files in the next folder. I also put up um, the website here where you can download if you want to download from the website, I suggest you do go there because at least you have an idea of what it looks like. What does the EPA website look like? Uh, yes, move. So there's a model there. It shows what the model is about. It can be quite confusing for the beginner, but uh, this is what it looks like. You're not sure which one to download. So there's three different, uh, remember we have a few executable files. You have all these files. So these different files come from different uh, websites, different pages. So that's why I put all three. There's the operating uh, system. Should not be a problem. Hardware requirement. And you need the following exe files in a directory. We call it the working directory. So these are the files, you can download them. Just be careful, sometimes uh, when you download it, they might, the computer, you might, <laughs> your computer might think of it as a virus because it's an .exe file. But you can rest assured that it's not a virus. <laughs> All right, then for the terrain data, you need to use QGIS, right? So you go to this page, download and install QGIS. Click on that. There. I think you know what to do. Download for Windows. You can explore this a bit. And then to download your uh, MET data. I find the easiest way to download the MET data is using RStudio. Have you heard of R? Yeah. So, uh, this is where you need to download, uh, what you need to do to download R in RStudio. Because there's an API, there's a function in RStudio that allows you to download the metadata based on the station that you choose. That means you need to know the station code. Like say, for example, Penang is WMK, WMKI, I forgot. Well, yeah, something like that, WMKI, and then different stations have different codes. So you just give that code, it's able to download the, the meteorology data for you. So this is the instruction to do that. And then some data. This is the list of weather station codes and group names. I think, did you notice that I separated into groups already? So take a look at your group. If you are uh, in group A, it's actually not in a group. You are by yourself because I just need to randomly uh, assign you. So if you are in group A, then you'll be uh, running the model at Bintulu. 
if uh, G, Kota Kinabalu, and so on. Now, this is in the website. It's in e-learning. So I'm not sure which group you are in. So, so notice that um, Bintulu has this WBGB station code. Langkawi is WMKL, and so on. Now this Konus LAS and Konus LOS is just a file that you need to have in your working directory for you to use the projection properly. Remember that equidistant cylindrical projection I mentioned when we spread it out, we changed the coordinate system. Yeah, so we need to have this. It's just a matter of putting it into the folder only, that's all. You know the working directory folder? Just put this two file inside the folder, enough. Nothing else. All right. Then uh, after data, then you need to download shape files. So I, this is a very good project because you're introduced to so many technical uh, aspects, so many technical details of running an air quality model. The GIS details, the emission details, the metrology details, and all. Now you know that weather station have a code, and the code is um, it's constant. It's the same. It's uh, within a list set by the World Meteorological Organization. So um, at least you know. Like in your location, what is the code of your weather station? And uh, for GIS, you know that uh, you can download terrain data. You can con you, the, in the, you need to have it in the format of DM or GeoTIFF from GeoTIFF to DM and so on. So there's a lot of technical things that you'll be introduced uh, while doing the project. I think that's quite good. But it does get a bit uh, tough for you to uh, understand them, but it's good for you. <laughs> so aside from that, GIS, there's this download shape file. Uh, this is in GIS. Um, you see, when you download the terrain data, you download terrain data for the entire world, or for a look, not entire world, for a tile. They call it a tile. And you don't really know what you're looking at. You just have a black, uh, like a grayish screen or grayish picture. So for you to get an idea of uh, whether that tile that you download is the actual location of um, your site, you need to have a boundary, right? You, you can recognize countries. You, you can recognize the you can re recognize the boundaries of a country or a state quite easily. So we download the shape file so we can have a boundary because the terrain data doesn't show the boundary. It just show a tile. So you won't you won't recognize where exactly uh, where is the shape file where the terrain file is about. So here I put download shape file. You go to this website GADM org. You can download spatial data by country, and then just choose, like say Malaysia. And then there's a shape file there. You need to use this in conjunction with the terrain data. So if you click on this, you will download a folder. Now, then there's a couple of files in there. You would use the level zero, because you just want to have the boundary to give an idea of uh, the location. Okay, once you've downloaded the data, you know, this is what you see. This is the TIFF data. It's not really um, illuminating, is it? Because you don't see anything. There is something there, it's just that um, it's very faint. These are all digital, uh, digital elevation or elevation data, terrain data. But it's not something that we can understand from here. So that's why we need to convert from this GeoTIFF format to DEM format. And that's where you need to use QGIS. You can't do it uh, using software that's available, uh, <coughs> software that is not GIS software. Mm, going back, let's see. All right. So uh, that's all that you need, uh, basically. You need the air screen models. You need QGIS to process the DEM file, the GeoTIFF file. You need RStudio and R to, to download the MET data. Inside here is the weather station, the weather station codes. You need the download shape files so you get a boundary of um, the countries for you to for you to judge whether the the TIFF file they download is correct. And you need this website to download the terrain data. These are all inputs to the model. So the steps of running the model. 
this is for the simplest case. You can run the model without the digital elevation uh, model files. You can run it without the mythology data files. You can make, but you make a lot of assumptions, but I guess it's the first uh, thing you need to do just to make sure that you'll be able to run the model without, um, just run the model to get some results. So if you just want to run this model without those, those files, it's a simple one point source. We just need to have these three files inside the working directory. So first you create a, a folder, name it AirScreen or whatever name that you want. Take note of the path. You know what a path is? A path is something like this. Think for Windows, it'll be like that. Like that. You've seen this before, right? So you need to take note of this path. Depending on where you put it, where you put this folder. So an example is that. Copy the executables or the, those files just now. Put it inside this folder. Click on the start button on your desktop. Search for cmd axe, the command file. Then this cmd, you need to navigate to the path. I'm not sure whether you know how to navigate to the path. I don't, I don't have the, I don't have Windows here. Okay, so now you have the prompt, right? It's blinking. Then you need to go to the folder. So you just type cd, change directory, cd, next folder, cd, next folder, cd, next folder. Click on the start button on your desktop, okay, search for this, navigate to the path, then type this airscreen.exe and follow the on-screen instruction, that's all. This is the data that we need to input into the model. What you get to see is something like this. This is what you see. You just, uh, it will ask you a question. You just follow through the, follow the questions. So uh, I forgot the first question, but the information for you to fill up all those questions is just this. It'll ask you, uh, you what's the title, name, whether you want to use uh, English or metric units. If it's metric unit, you put M. Whether it's a point, volume, area, or a circle area, or a flare. So let's say you want points, so it's P. If it's in, what's the emission rate? One gram per second. What is the stack height? Then stack diameter and so on. Just fill up. This is just the demo, uh, demo uh, values for you to use the model. Now this we can ignore for now because that is related to the AFCM. This also I just ignore for now. And then all the other points. There's a lot of questions, but you just just write it there. It's quite simple. And then the output is this. That's the results. Check to confirm your inputs. Thank you.